Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, if everybody don't know me, my name's Brandon. Uh, I moved up here about, I've been here almost three years now from South Georgia. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I sat back there and, you know, the Lord moved on me to give my testimony. And, you know, I let Satan beat me out of it. So, you know, and I know it Wednesday night. Some reason I know Wednesday night when I went out that door, he's going to ask me to open this service Saturday night. So I figured that's my opportunity. And uh, so I'm going to tell you my testimony. When I was 18 years old, I almost took my life. And I grew up in church from a young age. And when I turned 18, I got to that point where I felt like, you know, I know everything in this life. And I turned from the Lord, and I learned, turned from my parents, and I run out, and I run off. You know, and it, Satan, he painted a pretty, pretty picture for me. You know, I went out and partied, and I drank and smoked with all the boys, and I had a good time. Well, so I thought I did anyway. And then, which is my wife now, come to me and told me she had a baby on the way. And that scared me to death. Here I was, 19 years old, and I was still a child, and I did not know how to raise a child. And you know, one night I was drinking, and I was coming home from a little place called Nashville, Georgia. I was on Teeterville Highway. And on that highway, you can run 100 miles an hour for 10 miles without letting up, and that's what I done. And I knowed where there was a big old tree, and I said, when I get to that tree, it's half the size of the hood of my truck. I said, I'm going to put my truck in that tree. And I'm going to end it because I felt so ashamed of everything that I had done. I had turned my back on the Lord. I turned it all back on my family. And here I had done everything and all this sin had come up on me. I was going to end my life. I thought that was the only way out. And I come up I was running 100 mile an hour and that old truck switched off and then it kicked back up to 100. And it, all the way for 10 miles I run that. And when I got a mile from that tree, a voice come to me. And it was the voice of the Lord. He said, who is going to raise that child? And I, all there was was tears came to my eyes. And I slowed that old truck down. And I went home. And then a couple of weeks later, I married her. And the first time church was open again, I was in it. And that's 18 years ago. And I'm going to tell you something. I was a drinking bad, and I ain't took a drink in 18 years. And I praise the Lord for it. He's been good to me. He gave me that good Holy Ghost. He's blessed my wife with that good Holy Ghost. And I tell you what, there ain't no greater thing to serve a living God. And I praise Him today. He's been a good Lord to me and my family. He's watched over us daily, and I praise Him for it. And I, sometimes I don't feel worthy to serve Him. I tell you that the truth. But I tell you what. His mercy saved me one night. Because if he hadn't, I wouldn't be standing here for you today. You know, if anybody got any prayer requests or anything to make known, we'll go ahead and get some service started here. There you go. Yes, Lord. My husband's got to pray for him. He's he's saved, but he ain't got the Holy Ghost. And I'm praying he'll get it. So y'all keep praying for him. That's what I'm saying.
Nej, jag slår honom. Well, if everybody stand with me, we'll get prayer and we'll get this start service started and ask the Lord to move and bless in us. Lord, we praise and honor you today, Lord, for your many blessings on us. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you'll move, Lord. We come to get something from you tonight. Lord, that you'll move in our hearts, Lord, and get that we need to keep on going. Lord, to give us a strength we ask for, Lord. Lord, to give us a blessing. Lord, as we praise and honor your holy name, precious Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for keeping us all, Lord, and remember these requests made tonight, Lord, that you'll move in them, Lord, move in their hearts and keep them, Lord, in thy holy name we pray, precious Jesus. Amen.
Oh, he'll bring me out. Well, David told King Saul, Saul, I will go. I will fight Goliath with what I have in my soul. I have got no armor, but I have got no doubt. I know my God is with me, and he will bring me out. Well, I rose this morning. Just about home time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for the deliverance. Cause the Lord, I've never been this homesick before. I see the bright light shine. It's just about home time. I can see my father standing. Door. This world in a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Oh Lord, I've never been this haunting before. Can't you see the bright light shine? It's just about home time. I can't see my father standing. He's at the door.
can't see my father standing at the door. This world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Lord, I've never been there haunted before. And I can't see my family gathering. Sweet faces all familiar. No one told or people anymore. Oh, my old lonesome heart is crying. Think I've spread my wings for flying. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. I see the bright light shine. He's just about home time. And I can't see my father standing at the door. mosquito just flies right back to the center of my eye and back just keeps going back and forth and I only have sight in one eye and it's my right eye. Uh, I've been legally blind since I've been a child in my left eye and uh, that's irritating me and I know God can take care of that. So yeah, I would just like to stand in prayer and I just want to you know, the devil said, well, just go on over there. And I thought, no, I want people to know what they're praying about. And I want people to get a hold of God. So I just want to stand in there for it. Oh 
just one touch of the master's hand I'll be made whole oh and I need a healing touch that only the Bed in pain, look right up in the 
heaven begin to call on the holy name power of God came on me built that heavenly host not a cloud of that better king that full of the holy ghost I remember one night laying in my bed in pain good pride up in the heaven begin to call on the holy name power of God came on me built that heavenly host
all mountains be removed. Oh, Lord, help me put my trust in you. Oh, help me believe that I may receive oh, everything that my soul needs. Maybe the blessing or healing. Oh, Lord, just tell me.
merciful, powerful, powerful name of Jesus. Glorious name above every name. We're higher than the heights of heaven, deeper than the depths of sin, stronger than a heart rebellion is. The name of the great I am. Glory to the name of power. Glory to the name of love. Glory to the name of grace. Name and earth and heaven praise. Yes, it's so powerful. Powerful name of Jesus. Almighty and the merciful. Powerful. Powerful name of Jesus. Glorious name above every name. Yes, it's so powerful. Powerful name of Jesus. Almighty and the merciful. Powerful. Powerful name of Jesus. Glorious name above every name. Yes, it's so powerful. Powerful name of Jesus. Powerful name of Jesus, glorious name above every name. Now every knee shall bow before him, every son and daughter bless, every heart of praise adore him, every tongue shall confess. Cause he's so powerful, powerful name of Jesus. Blessed, every heart of praise adore him, every tongue shall confess. Oh, he's so powerful, powerful name of Jesus. Well, my and merciful, powerful, powerful name of Jesus. Glorious name above every name. Cause it's so powerful.
Well, the battle's not mine, says little David. Lord, it's thine. I'm in your favor. I'm giving it all to you. And Lord, I know not what to do. And I'm so glad you let me see. Lord, that you're really all that I need for the battle's not mine. I'll give it. Lord, it's thine. Now, little David, oh, so small. While Goliath was so tall, the odds were just so high for little David. But so he shook off all of his load, and by the power of God, he was bold. He said, The battle. I'll give it to you and learn it's thine. Well, the battle's not mine, said little David. Lord, it's thine. I'm in your favor. I'm giving it all to you. And Lord, I know not what to do. And I'm so glad you let me see. Lord, that you're really all that I need for the battle's not mine. I'll give it to you, and Lord, it's thine. Now, little David, unafraid, before the giant he stood that day, it seemed to be the end for. The lion and the bear he slew. Oh, Goliath shall go down too, for the battle's not mine. I'll give it to you, and Lord, it's thine. Well, the battle's not mine, said little David. Lord, it's thine. I'm in your favor. I'm giving it all to you. Lord, I know not what to do, and I'm so glad you let me see. Lord, that you're really all that I need, for the battle's not mine. I'll give it to you, and Lord, it's thine. Now, little David, he stood tall, while Goliath was so small. Sweet victory had reigned for little David Cause he gave the battle to one That holds the record for getting things done He said the battle's not mine I'll give it to you and learn it
David, he stood tall While Goliath was so small The battle to one that holds the record for getting things done. He said, The battle's not mine, and I'll give it to you, and Lord, it's mine. Well, the battle's not mine, said little David. Lord, it's mine. I'm in your favor. I'm giving it all to you. And Lord, I know. Amen. It's so good to see people seeking after the Lord and, and getting help like that. It just, man, that makes it, it makes it great, don't it? It makes a great service when the power of God moves in. Come to you tonight with the evening's offering, goes to the church. So it's good to have Donnie and Vicky back with us. So finally, snowbirds come back home. So and today's Vicky's birthday, so we got to make sure we...
Amen. Amen. That's sometimes plain talk's easy understood, ain't it? You know, it's uh, it's easy to talk about what we have done. It's a lot harder to confess what we've not done, right? How we fail. The Bible says, "Confess your faults one to another, that you may be healed." So we never never go into anything and and testify about it from a position of weakness, but instead we do it from saying, "All right." Now I know what I need to do, and I'm going to do something about it. Amen? If you have your Bibles tonight, Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12. And we have been standing for the reading, and I, I really like that. I think it's very respectful. Genesis 26. Adjusted my volume just a little bit. I think I had it set for camera the other night. Now, I, I eat the <laughs> microphone, so, you know. Well, Cameron done a good job the other night, didn't he? Amen. Yeah, it was so good. So, so proud of him, proud of these guys. But if you have your Bibles, Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Catch that. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and, and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there, and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitma. And he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not, and he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. You may be seated. I'd like to preach this message tonight about keep digging, about keep digging. I, really, this is what the Lord is has laid on my heart about they are times that we, we, get, we come under attack. Now, every one of us go through, our, go through our seasons of attack. If you've not ever been through a spiritual battle, just get ready because you will go through one. We all, we all go through the battles, through the trials, through the tests. We all are, are tempted. Uh, Satan comes along. There are, there are periods of time in which we are tempted. And if you go through, and we could go through this life of Isaac and how Isaac was this supernatural child that was born to Abraham when he was a hundred year old. And, and if we go through, you'll see that everything that Abraham, he gave unto Isaac. But there got to come a time when it's not something that is simply give to you, but you also have to fight for what has been given to you. Yes, everything we get, is, it is by grace. There's no question about that. But I'll tell you, we have been called to be soldiers on the battlefield, to go out and to be in the, in the battle and to fight for what belongs to us. And whenever they would, the Philistines tried to steal this well, but Isaac made up his mind, I don't care what the enemy tries to take from me, I am going to go back and I am going to reclaim what God has given me. If you, if you become a punching bag for the devil and you let the devil push you around, you will always be pushed around. Some, sometimes you've got to bury your feet in the ground. You've got to plant your feet. You've got to push back. You've got to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and you have got to mount an offense instead of being defensive all the time. We've got to mount an offense and push back and say, you know what? You're not going to take this well from me. You're not going to take anything. I know the devil wants to destroy me. The Bible tells us very clearly that the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy and he will kill and he will steal and he will destroy unless you rise up and realize your position in the kingdom of God. Amen. I was studying this out this week and this is another message for another time but I, I read across there where it said that we, uh, it talks about how we have to declare unto principalities and powers. And what that means is when in the King James it's a little foggy, but what it really means is that you have to declare unto the devil who you are and whose you belong to. 
You've got to sometimes stand up and look a devil right in the eye and say, I'm tired of you taking my wills. I'm tired of you filling them in. I'm tired of always being under attack, but I'm going to redig the wells. And my message tonight is keep on digging. I want to go through this. I want to break this down. I, this is just the way the Lord gave it to me. So I want to go back to Genesis 26 and 12. And I want to do a, a, a breakdown of these words. And I'm going to try to hurry through it. But I believe this will help somebody. Because there have been some people that's been under attack in here. All of us have been under attack. Amen? Amen? At one point or another. But the Bible says Genesis 26 and 12. And Isaac sowed in that land. And received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord, Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Number one, Isaac sowed and was blessed. Now, if you look at this, this is at a time of famine. But Isaac took, instead of taking simply the seed and, and consuming it, he was still sowing. Just because you're under attack, just because there seems to be a famine in the land, does not mean that you don't need to sow into the kingdom of God. Isaac was blessed because he sowed. And I was thinking about this church because this church has a target on its back. Make no mistake about it. Every enemy would like to shut the door down to the church. I mean, look around at what God is doing in this church house. I mean, I mean it's just one blessing after another. All, it seems like all we've got to do is name something. And it, two days later, it'll be laid in our lap because we are trying our best to sow some seed. That way we can see souls get saved. We can see people get some help. We can be a blessing in the community. That is what I want Lake Fork Church to be. It's not simply a little closed society down here in the middle of Morgan County, but I want it to be a place that we can bless other people. He said, you was, I was hungry. You fed me. I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was in prison. You came to me. I was uh, all these things. And he said, I was sick and you visited me. All these things. I was this. They said, Lord, we didn't even know we was doing it to you. But Isaac sowed and was blessed. And if you want to look around and see why this church is so blessed, it is because this church is very good at sowing. I want to thank this church because this week Brother Chris was able to go down into Dominican Republic, go down to Brother Pachardo's church, hand them the cash to buy that church. That is something that you was part of. This church has... This church has, has something that it has sold into a country 2,000 miles away that souls will be saved. Thank you for that. They was $4,000 short. Brother Stanley put a post on Facebook, let everybody know they was a little bit short on it, but still going to go buy it and just, you know, buy it by faith, put it in, uh, borrow the rest of it, and said somebody walked up and handed them $5,000 to finish doing it. Man, I, that is great. You cannot outgive God. I, I, mean, I, I could go through a whole message of this about how you cannot outgive God. Just to show her, I told you that one night, I, the Lord laid that on my heart so strongly. I, I thought, I need to, we need, this church needs to give $5,000 into that ministry to help buy that church for Brother Pichardo. Two days later, somebody walked up and handed me a check for $20,000. You, you say, well, that's isolated. I can name it. One after another after another. The other day I told John to in passing. I said, we need to get us a tent so we can start having tent revivals. Went over and have, have, have dinner with Carl and his wife. And when we was over, he, I told him what it was on my mind. He said, you know what? Let me make a phone call. What, a day or two later, he called and said, uh, Sidney Jivenden is going to give us, uh, give us that tent so we can have tent revivals. <laughs> Listen, Isaac sowed and was blessed. This church, it, because it is sowing, it is also being blessed. But now catch this. It says, for he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herd, and a great store of servants. Man, that sounds good, don't it? Had a great possession of flocks and, and herds and servants. But catch what the next word says here. And the Philistines envied him. Amen. Just as sure as God begins to bless you, just as sure as God opened up the windows of heaven and gives you something, I promise you there will be an enemy that comes after you because they envy you. A lot of times that is, that is how, the, how the devil begins to work is that as soon as we begin to be blessed, there will, will be jealousy that will rise up. See, people a lot of times don't want to see you blessed. Oh, they love you as long as you're struggling. As long as you're sick, oh, they'll send out prayer requests for you. As long as you're the sinner that walks in that needs a Savior, oh, bless your heart, brother. So good to have you at the church. We're just so glad you and your family are here. 
Let God put an anointing on your life. And you'll, you'll watch the goats and the wolves in sheep's clothing. You'll watch them come out of the woodwork to begin to attack you. Why? Because the enemy does not want to see you blessed. Amen. Amen. I don't want to get in the flesh here. But you mark it down. Whatever you, man, used to, well... The Philistines envied him. Isaac was envied. Why was Isaac envied? wasn't because he was simply a son of Abraham. It wasn't because he was the son of the covenant. It wasn't because his name meant laughter. It was because he was blessed of God that the, that the Philistines began to envy him. And I'll promise you this, as soon as God starts blessing you, moving you into your anointing and into your purpose, they will be people that at one time loved you, at one time called you brother or sister that will turn their back on you because they do not want to see you be blessed of God you mark that down amen. amen it says the Philistines envied him see there are people that don't like to see you get blessed it says and then it goes on verse 15 for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth so when you become blessed when you become anointed when God begins to use, I've never yet saw anybody that had a successful ministry that was not attacked by the enemy. If you're not doing anything, the devil will leave you alone and let you stay in that stagnant position. But just as sure as you start to do something for the kingdom of God, it, it, it stirs up the devil. Every demon of hell will come against you. And I come to rattle the devil's cage. I get worried when, whenever the Bible says woe to them that everyone speaks well of. Man, if you can straddle the fence and everybody likes you and they bless you, man, do you got something wrong? But I'll promise you this, just as sure as you start doing what's right, they are going to be an enemy that comes after you. And the Bible says that the Philistines envied Isaac, but it didn't just say they simply envied him. That's one thing. But they began to sabotage him. Because it's one thing just to be jealous. But when that jealousy begins to manifest outwardly, now, there's, now it goes into a whole new level of attack. It says the Philistines had stopped up the wells that Abraham, his father, dug. Now let me ask you something. You go on down here, it says they'd done that after Abraham was dead. Why did they wait till Abraham was dead to fill up the wells? i tell you why. Because that man of God was a fighter. Oh, Abraham, he wasn't one to put up with it. When they took, whenever they took Lot captive, he got his servants together and said, come on, we're going to go down and fight that bunch. And the Philistines knew as long as that old man was still alive, it didn't matter if he was a hundred and some year old, they knew he was a fighter. But they wanted to find out, all right, Abraham's a fighter, but is Isaac a fighter? It's one thing to talk about what the church has been. It's another thing to say, all right, is the church still the same thing, cut from the same cloth, still willing to fight, still willing to go against the devil still willing to rise up and rebuke every enemy that wars against the church it says that they that they fill them with earth when you are blessed you will be attacked when you are blessed they are going to be people who throw dirt in your well testify about it testify about the goodness of God tell somebody you got healed tell somebody you got in a prayer line you got your victory tonight There'll be people that come right along and try to throw the dirt in the well while you're still shouting about getting the victory. The enemy don't wait around very long. He'll come right on the heels of your biggest blessing will come your greatest battle because he knows the longer you're established in this, the longer that you have buried your feet in the ground, the harder it's going to be to move you. So they're going to come against you and you mark it down. Just as sure as God blesses you, you will be attacked for it. If you think about this story, the Philistines did not take the well to drink from it. They just didn't want anybody else to drink from it. Amen. Sometimes people are jealous of you, but they don't want, they, they want what you've got, but they're not willing to pay the price for what you've got. So rather than let you, oh, I feel good right now. I'm talking to some people tonight. 
Just as sure as you start feeling good, there's going to be somebody walking along with a shovel trying to throw dirt back in your well because they don't want you to. That's what Satan wants. Satan does not want you to glorify God. And Satan will use people to throw the dirt in the well. You testify that God healed you. There'll be somebody come along and say, are you really healed? You tell somebody you're called to preach and you mark it down. There'll be people come along and say, are you really sure you're called to preach? You tell somebody that God is moving in the church there'll be somebody walking around wanting to bust your bubble how do I know that because I've been a pastor for a few years now I tested, or told somebody one time talking about the revival and how great it was and I'm telling you they sit there and said oh I've seen things like happen like that before yeah they've done that now yeah I've seen it all fall apart well the people won't stick will they you know what they're doing they're trying to throw dirt in your well not because they want what they, that they're going to use the well theirself. They just don't want you to use it. They, see, this is, how, this, is how, this is how goats work. You hear me? This is how goats work. Goats and wolves sho- and wolves in sheep's clothing will not use, they don't, want, they don't want to pay the price for an anointing. And as long as you stay on their level, they're fine. As long as you're below them and they can hold their thumb on you and they can tell you everything that you need to do and how you need to believe and how you need to conduct yourself, as long as they can do that, they're fine with you. But just as sure as God begins to bless, and it's not man that blesses. I'm telling you, it's God, when you can stand here, and I'm telling you, whenever you can lay hands on somebody and you can watch the joy come into their life. I've been been so excited here lately as this church gets unified about people that are getting their help and they testify about the goodness of God. But you mark it down. Anytime there is a prey, there is going to be a predator. There is somebody that's going to come along and they're going to try to sabotage it just as sure as it happens. And the Bible says that they filled them with earth. Philistines wasn't using the well, but they didn't didn't want it. They just didn't want Isaac to have it. And catch what it says here. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, verse 16, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. He wasn't bashful about it. He said that. He said, you are stronger than I am. Now, I, I don't know... A lot of people would never admit that, right? But he said, go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. The hatred comes because the enemy recognizes your anointing. When we talk about the anointing of God, what does it say? It says you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You're going to get power. You have this ability within you. The Bible tells now listen, I'm not one of them cessationists. I am dead against any theology, any teaching that tells you that there that the gifts of the and gifts and, and blessings and manifestations of the Spirit of God were left at one time because those same blessings are here right now. If you'll dig the well, you can get the same blessing, the same Holy Ghost power, the same tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecies and healings and miracles and discerning a spirit and faith. Every one of these, these are manifestations of the power of God. And you know what Satan wants? Satan does not want you to exercise uh, or work in the gifts of God. He wants to hold you back and Abimelech said, I want you to leave because you're stronger than we are. That enemy, as soon as he recognized an anointing in your life, he's going to come against you. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Don't get angry at people because they say things. Because people sometimes can become a pawn for Satan. It don't matter if they go to church, don't go to church. Even if they're saved, saved as they can be. I mean, you you think that can't happen. You say, oh, it can't happen. Well, tell Simon Peter that. Simon Peter at one point said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood never revealed that to you, but my Father. The very next words out of his mouth, he says, you're not going to go into Jerusalem and be betrayed in the hands of sinful men. And Jesus turns around and he says, get behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to me. Why? Because It wasn't that he was calling Simon Peter Satan. He was saying the words that are coming out of your mouth have been, they have been put there by Satan himself. You have become an adversary. That is what the word Satan means. It means adversary. 
And if you think for a second that Lick Fork Church don't have some adversaries, if you think that Satan is going to let this church sit here and keep, be, and keep growing and keep growing and keep being blessed and, and start doing missionary work and start doing outreach work and start doing tent revivals and start doing prison ministry and start doing all the things that we've got lined up, man, we're going to go. Well, I'll get into that later. No, I, I won't. This church is going places. Amen. This church is being blessed in a great way. Go ahead and declare it. I want there to be a school here. I'd love for there to be a seminary here. I want to get a, a bigger church. I want, I want a bigger food pantry. I want more mission work. I want every bit of these things. You say that's just you. No, I believe that if you'll sow, I believe that if you'll sow and give your life into the ministry, that God will bless it. But I am not so naive as to think that we're going to sit here and we're going to keep growing and the devil is not going to come against us. You mark it down. Every devil of hell has got their sights on us right now. They are trying to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the church can sit back and whimper and let the devil take it. Or we can stand up like a militant force and say, You are not going to take the whales. I don't care if you're jealous of it, if you don't like it, if you're envious, you can get over it. We're still doing what God has called us to do. He said, You're mightier than us. You're mightier than we are. See, hatred comes because the enemy recognizes your anointing. Think about it. Every time that you have went through your greatest spiritual attack has came right on the heels of your greatest blessing. Right? Amen? Just as sure as God blesses you, the devil is going to come along and try to steal it away. You know what the key to it all is? The Bible says that they cannot spoil a strong man's house unless they first bind that strong man. So if we are going to get victory over the devil, you, let me tell you what we need to do. We need, we need more of the spiritual power of God to bind that enemy, and we have the authority. He said they will cast out devils. We have the authority to bind every demon spirit that comes against us. But if that works, it's also the reverse is true. If the devil can get you so bound up and get you so hurt and get you so confused and get you so tore up and try to take from you, he'll bind you. It's time the church that realizes we are not on a cruise ship. We are on a battleship stationed outside of the very gates of hell. He said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. 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 Go from us, for thou art mightier than we are. I, I hope every... <laughs> what was that that one old preacher said? said, I hope every morning when my feet hit the ground, the devil says, oh, get ready because he's up now. That's how the church needs to be. We don't need to be a punching bag for the devil. The devil needs to be a punching bag for us. We need to resist him. And the Bible said he will flee from you. You know what the word flee means? To run away as in terror. Amen. He said we want you to leave because you're mightier than we are. And the Bible says, and, oh, I like this. Oh, we're getting ready to get somewhere here. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and he dwelt there. Get away from people who are trying to sabotage you. Amen. Amen. Get away from people who are trying to sabotage you. And let me go a step further. Quit trying to impress people that hate you. You're not going to win their affection. You're not going to make them like you. I've stood on my head for people that was, that, let's just call it like it is, that have been jealous, that have not liked, that it was not liked that God has put an anointing on my life and it's in the life of this church. I have had enemies that have come against me and I for years had tried to stand on my head to impress people. I'm tired of trying to impress the devil. He Listen, he already knows what's going on down here. I'm not here to impress him. I'm not here to win a political uh, debate or I'm not here to try to win any, any, uh, any favor with people. Amen. I want my favor to be with him. Amen. And the Bible says, and Isaac departed thence. When you get people that fight you on every hand, then get away from them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright. The Bible says not to cast your pearls before swine nor give that which is holy unto the dogs. 
In other words, don't invest in people that, that, do not, that will not use what you are investing. You're still good to people. I'll be good to my enemy. I'll feed him hunger. If, he, if they're hungry, I'll feed them. If they're thirsty, I'll give them drink. But I'm going to tell you, they got to come a time sometime whenever you separate yourself because the Bible says that Isaac departed thence. If they don't respect your anointing, if they don't respect the call of God on your life, then they got to come a time when you say, all right, you go that way and I'm going to go this way because I'm tired of being sabotaged every time I open my mouth. I'm tired of every time that I say anything you're coming against me alright if you don't want me there I'm not going to waste all my time trying to get a goat to like me when there are millions of sheep out there that need to be brought into the flock of God we need to be going out into the highways and the hedges compelling them that his house may be filled and if you're not very careful you'll spend more time trying to convince some old goat to like you as you will to try to get souls saved in the kingdom of God Amen. Amen. Get away from people that's trying to sabotage you. And the Bible says, and Isaac, verse 18, and Isaac digged again. I, I feel good, man. I'm telling you, I feel good. Thank you. I feel it. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped him after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the name by which his father had called them. Isaac chose to be blessed in spite of what the Philistines did. Let me say that again. Isaac chose to be blessed in spite of what the Philistines did. I'm not, listen, I'm not a victim. You don't need to be a victim. We are more than conquerors. When Isaac looked at that, he thought, man, I know that God is blessing me because the Bible said that in the same year that he sowed, he reaped a hundredfold. And the Bible says the Philistines was envious of him. The Philistines didn't want him around. The Philistines told him to get out. But the Bible says that when he went, he, he digged again the wells of water. He chose to be blessed in spite of what the Philistines had done to him. If you're not careful, you listen, I'm talking to somebody tonight. You're going to let the devil, you're going to let a goat or an old... Uh, an old wolf in sheep's clothing stop you from the blessings of God. You don't have to answer to them every time you turn around. You got to answer to somebody. You don't have to answer to anybody but to Almighty God. And if God is blessing you, then you need to get with the program and quit staying around in places that you have no business being. If they don't want you there, then get your stuff and go somewhere where you can be blessed of God. Amen. Amen. You can sit down and be the victim or you can roll your sleeves up and get to work. Amen. Amen. The enemies of this church don't get to dictate what we do. Amen. The enemies of the church don't get to dictate what we do. I love Facebook and YouTube. I love the fact that, that people watch right there. Some people watch because they want to be blessed. There are other people who watch just trying to find fault. If you're trying to find fault with me, hey, you, take a good look. won't take you long. You can find plenty of them. But I'll tell you who you can't find fault with is him. If you go to church for a fault-finding expedition, you need to get saved. If all you're doing is looking for the fault in your brother or sister or somebody that doesn't suit you and somebody that you don't think is doing it the way you would do it, you need to be the first one on an altar rail because sometimes you have got to choose to be blessed in spite of what anybody does to you. Listen, Paul said, what can separate me from the love of Christ? Principalities can't do it. Powers can't do it. The people can't do it. The preacher can't do it. The church can't do it. There's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. I've made up my mind a long time ago. I'm going to be used of God. I want to be a willing vessel for Him. Whatever He wants me to do is what I want to do. Amen. And the herdman of Gerar, catch this, said he digged again the wells of water. So he went back and this that hateful bunch. I mean, what else would you call it? When you are sitting there and you walk up to where there was a well at, they're not using it. And you walk up to it, it's filled in with dirt. You think, man, what in the world? If you wasn't going to use it, then why didn't you just leave it alone? No, people can't do that. Oh, the enemy don't want that. Because they are people that are so spiteful. Oh, yeah. The Bible says that the, that the Pharisees, it says that you stand in the gate 
And you neither enter into the kingdom of heaven yourself, but you also block the way for anybody who would enter in. They are people that are, that is their main goal is to be a stumbling block to anybody that is being blessed. But the Bible says that Isaac chose to go back and dig the well again. I'm going to tell you something. That's what the church needs to do. We need to go back and redig the wells. The enemies tried to do this, tried to tear it down. Let's go back and dig the wells again because if we'll dig the wells, we will be blessed of God. But it says this. It says, And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. Catch that. They said, The water is ours. Another point. People will try to steal what they've not worked for. Oh, that's good, ain't it? People will try to steal what they have not worked for. That's why the church needs to come together and work together like the Bible tells us to. Work together as a body. Each part also adds to the body of Christ like a building that is fitly formed together. When it talks about the manifestations of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, it tells about the manifestations. Immediately it jumps in about the body and there being no schism in the body. Then it goes back to spiritual gifts. Then it talks about love. And then it talks about gifts again. You know why? Because the church, in order for the gifts to work, the church has got to come together and work the right way. Work together in unity. And the devil, you mark that down. The devil will do everything everything he can to steal it away and listen uh, people will try to steal what they've not worked for Amen. you know that's the in uh, that is really what it's talking about there in the last days that they are going to be people that are going to stand on that day and they are going to say lord lord have we have we not cast out devils have we not done mighty works and Jesus will say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. We, listen church, we, every one of us has a ministry. We have a calling. We have an anointing. The devil wants to steal it from you. The devil wants to keep you so suppressed that you feel like that you're not even worthy of anything. You know what made Isaac worthy? It wasn't how good Isaac was. It was the fact that he was the son of Abraham. You know why we're worthy? It's not because this old flesh is worthy of anything. It's because I'm a son of God. The Bible said them that are led by the Spirit of God, they are are the sons of God and the, the blessings of God belong to the church because we are part of the body of Christ but people will try to steal what they've not worked for Amen. and the Bible says and he called the name of the well Esek because they strove with him where there is jealousy be careful of drinking the water where there is jealousy be careful of drinking their water you know what the word Esek means it means contention. The well, the first well that Isaac dug, he named it contention because it says the people strove with him. Some people wonder, I wrote this down today, why they aren't drinking from the living water because, but they choose to drink from the well of contention. That's better than what you think it is. Man, I figured more out of that than that. Thank you. Thanks, JC. That's my number one fan. People, want, you want to drink from some living water? Quit drinking from the well of contention. Amen. 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 You want the Holy Ghost? You want the gifts of the Spirit? You want the you want all the I mean, you want the gift of healing? We need the gift of healing. We need the gift of prophecy. We need we need all these gifts at work in the church house. Let me tell you the only way you're going to get them is when you dig down to the well of living water. But if you're drinking from the well of contention, don't be surprised that you don't get any blessings from God. If you come to church or you are, you are a Christian and that is your primary goal is to be in competition and contention and filling up everybody's well. <laughs> There's some people just so negative. A amen. amen. I mean, it don't matter what's going on. You tell them about it, and buddy, they are the first one to try to. <laughs> I know I probably shouldn't stay on that. But that's, it says they called the name of the well Esek. 
because they strove with him. When there's jealousy, be careful of the water. So you know what the Bible says? And they digged another well. So if you are at that well of contention, that well of competition, that well of jealousy, that you can't even see, you can't even rejoice in somebody else's success, then I'm going to tell you, you need to go and dig you another well. Because you're not drinking from the right fountain. Did Jesus not say that a man, uh, the same spring cannot produce bitter and sweet water? If everything that comes out of your mouth is bitterness and nobody lives good enough for you and nobody does good enough for you and the church is not doing right and the preachers are not doing right and everything you look at, it's negative this and negative that. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to quit worrying about how everybody else, how, how they're doing. You need to go back to an old fashioned altar of prayer again you need to get your shovel out knock the rust off that thing get back on an altar and dig you another well because if you stay at the well of contention it will destroy you it has become poisonous to you so you need to dig another well alright so they threw dirt in your other well they, they tried to steal what they didn't earn they started contention because they're scared of you and they're jealous of you you can choose to stay and try to draw water from that well. I wouldn't want to drink from that, would you? I mean, you really, you, you think about it. Boy, it's hot in here. <laughs> but I feel good, buddy. But if you were to, if the, if the sinner out there was to, was to look at, at a lot of Christians... And judge whether or not they want to be saved based on the way or based on the way they act, would they even want what you've got? I've said that before. People say, Well, my kids won't even go to church. Well, if you've talked about the church like dogs and the preacher's not good enough and the deacons are not good enough and the leadership and the musicians are not good enough and it's too hot, too cold, it's too loud, not loud enough. If that's all you're doing, man, you're drinking from the wrong well. When we go to church, what we're supposed to be doing is coming in to worship God. I can go back through the history of the church and I can tell you that at the times of the greatest revivals in history, it was not a time at ease. You had the Azusa Street Revival. It would get 110 degrees degrees in Los Angeles and the flies would swarm the people but they made up their mind they wasn't coming to be they wasn't coming just to get some pleasure they was coming to get something from God and if you make up your mind I'm going to dig in tonight you can get you can get as much as you want based on whether or not you're willing to dig or not Don't complain that Brother Noah is drinking from living water right now if you've not even picked up a shovel to dig any at all. If you don't dig, you're not going to get anything. you got to dig yourself. Don't compare yourself to somebody else and don't get mad at them because they're digging and you're not digging. It's not strange concerning the fiery trials. It's not strange they don't want us coming up into the prison. It's not strange that, there, that, that everything that we do, the enemy is going to come again. It's not strange. It's why? Because we're on the battlefield. And I've made up my mind. I'm not going to drink from the well of contention. I'm not going to stand and play. And I'm not going to try to win a popularity contest with anybody. No saying is I'm not trying to steal sheep, but we do plant grass around here. I ain't trying to steal anybody. But I'll tell you this, if, if it, people ain't getting fed, they can come, I'll tell you where you can get fed at. And I'm not ashamed to say it either. You can come to Lick Fork Church. You can get your blessing. You can get your feeding. You can get your healing. You can get everything that you need. If, you, if you're willing to come and you're willing to dig in every gift of God, He will not withhold any good thing from them that walk up rightly before Him. If you've not listened... You want the well of living water? Then quit drinking from the well of contention. Quit walking around and wonder why everybody ain't suiting your standard. It ain't your standard anyhow. We're going to judge, or we're going to be judged based on the standard of Almighty God, not what anybody thinks. I've had people come. They don't like the way I preach. Then don't listen. If you don't like it, don't listen. If you don't like the way I pastor this church, go somewhere else. Amen. Amen. If you don't like the way the singers sing, if you don't like the way people are worshiping, listen, you got to take that up with God. 
But if you're going to drink from the well of contention, you're done for. But I'm going to tell you, I didn't get in this. to. I, I, don't, I don't like that fighting and arguing and going on. I can't stand that. I can't stand that every time you turn around, somebody's mouth is stuck out because you're not doing it the way they would. <sighs> Amen. I was going to say, is that all right? It has to be. That has to be all right. Because it says that they dug another well. See, I'm going <laughs> to. And they digged another well. Let me tell you this. I wrote this down today. This may sound snotty. Wherever I dig, it's going to be blessed. Amen. Can, can you say that? Wherever I dig, I believe God is going to bless it. If God wants me to pastor this church, I believe that God's favor is on this church and on this ministry. If he calls me out tonight, tells me to evangelize tomorrow, I believe his hand will be on it. I believe if I'm here at Lake Fork, I'll be blessed. But if I have to go somewhere else, I'll be blessed. If he calls me into a third world country, I believe he'll bless me there. Why? Because anywhere that we go, anywhere I go, I'm going to take my shovel and I'm going to dig down. No, you ain't going to please everybody, but I'm going to tell you right now, I want to sow something that way I can reap something. I want ministries to start. I I want to sow into these young men. Man, I'm proud that God has called up some young men to stand in the gap. I, I don't want to, I don't, you guys, I don't want to be in competition with you. There is not a competitive bone in my body in that aspect. I'm not in competition. I want to sow as much into you all as I can. I want to do everything in my power, any way I can ever help you, ever in my life. I want to open doors. If Listen. A lot of preachers, a lot of preachers are watching us on Facebook and YouTube. Now, if you're watching us and you're in competition with this church, don't call them. But if your people, I don't care if you're Baptist, Pentecostal, I don't care about that. But I'm going to tell you this. You see these young men that we've got in this church house? They need opportunities to preach. And if you want to be blessed, if you want to really be blessed and to be a blessing, invite them to come and preach at your church. Amen. I'm not in competition with you guys. I hope both of you uh, can preach better than I ever dream about it. I hope, the, I hope the anointing of God is poured out on you that you have mega churches that if time lies, I hope that God blesses you that he opens up the very windows of heaven and pours out a blessing there be not room enough to receive. Why would I say that? Because if I've sold anything into them, I get to reap a little bit of that. Amen. We, that... A lot of people might not have thought much about that. But that $5,000 going down into Dominican Republic, there is a man down there right now, Pastor Pichardo, one of the most humble human beings you ever met in your life, that right now he don't have to go every month and worry about whether or not he's going to have enough money to pay the rent on that building. Because Chris Davidson walked down there with a handful of $100 bills, walked up and handed it to him, and paid for that church. And that man now owns his own church. Every soul that gets saved there, every person that gets baptized in the Holy Ghost there, every person that comes out of that church that preaches the gospel, we have sold a little bit into them. I ain't got time to drink from the well of contention. I don't want to drink at no Isaac well. I am not in competition with anybody. I just simply know that wherever I go, it's going to be blessed. And you need to know that wherever you go, it's going to be blessed. That the, that, why? why would it be like that? You say, man, that's being arrogant. There's not anything about that I've said that says I've done that. It's the fact that wherever we go, all I need to go is make sure I take my shovel with me. As long as I've got my shovel, I'll be blessed. Because I believe as long as I dig, as I dig down and I take the time to dig, I can dig down until I can get into some water. Amen. Amen. You need to feel the same way. I know that if I could help these young preachers, whenever you walk up here, I know how it is. It's daunting to stand up here and have people look at you, especially when people start giving you the stink eye. You think they won't do it? Stand up here right now. But you know what it is? You have got to believe that when you take that step out of that church pew, 
and you walk up here and you deliver the word of God, that you are going to take your shovel and you're going to dig down and, uh, and as, more, as you start digging, you are going to hit that water. Right? I don't have to question whether or not. The devil fights me after every message, but he don't fight me beforehand. He might make, make you look at people, but I'm going to tell you, I believe that whenever I hear from God, if I'm going to deliver, I, I believe this message was for tonight. Amen. The devil trying to tell me you need to preach it tomorrow. I don't want to preach it tomorrow. That old man will turn to worms. I don't want to preach it tomorrow. I want to preach it right now because there's some people sitting in here right now. A lot of us sitting in here right now needs to hear this word. You don't need to wor you don't need to worry about drinking from the well of contention. If they don't want you there, find somewhere else to go. If they don't want to bless you, then listen. God will God will deal with your enemies. He said, "Vengeance is mine. I will recompense." I would be scared to death to be a person that stood in the way of the ministry of this church or the ministries that have came from this church I would be scared to death of it Amen. you can look at me like that if you want to Amen. Amen. Amen oh I feel good and mean and hateful and everything at the same time <laughs> it says and they digged another well and then it goes on it, it talks about and they digged another well and strove for that also and he called the name of it Sitma the word sitma, you know what it means? It means hostility. So he dug the first one and it was contention. And he dug the second one and it was hostility. You might as well go ahead and expect some controversy. The enemy wanted that one too. But you know what Isaac did? Isaac thought, I'm not going to sit here and fight over any hostility either. That's not worth fighting over. So the Bible says that he removed them from thence. And I'm about done here. And he digged another well, and for that they strove not, and he called the name of that Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. You know what the word Rehoboth means? It means spaciousness. He said, Now, this says they didn't fight over that one. And so Isaac realized that that first well, the well of contention, wasn't any good. And the second well, the well of hostility, wasn't any good. But he went and he dug the third well. And when he dug the third well, then it says that he was blessed. And, it, and they was actually, they was living water that came from this. Not just a pool of water, but running water. And listen, what it means is that me and you, we need to, we need to keep right on digging. If you're satisfied with the waters of contention and the waters of hostility, then you will never find the water of blessing. Amen? Amen. Listen, just because things don't work out, places with people, whatever, don't let that get you down. Because does the Bible not say that all things work together for good to them that are in Christ Jesus who are called according to his purpose? I believe in the sovereignty of God. I believe that God ordains people to be where they are. I believe every person in this church house tonight was ordained to be here of God. And we can sit back and we can argue over the wells of hostility and the wells of contention. Or we can get our shovel out and we can start digging. And when this time, when he dug, he got him a well of blessing. I believe right here at Lake Fort Church, while they come to get a song, I believe right here at Lake Fort Church, I believe they are waters of blessing. I believe that if we'll keep digging, if we won't, won't grow weary in well-doing, we're going to reap. We are starting to see the... We're starting to reap. But I'm going to tell you, church, I, I, this is how I feel about it. I don't believe we have even scratched the surface of what God is about to do in this church house. You say, why? Why do you believe that? Because the reason I believe that is because when I walk into this church house, man, it's exciting to come to church. I, I've been times before that it wasn't. I mean, it's almost a dread to go to church. I've been there before. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. But, man, I come in tonight. I, I mean, I come in every night. I'm excited about this. I am excited about what God is doing. Because you know what I see? I see a church that has stood up. Every, every person that is seeking after God, all these that have been coming and began to use their talent, they are standing there with the shovels in their hand. 
And if you get a church, I don't know how many people actually belong to this church. It'd probably be 300 people if we counted everybody. But if you can get the church to where it's firing on all cylinders, get them away from the wells of contention. Quit competing with people. We are not in competition with any other pastor, with any other preacher, with any other church, or any other ministry. If they're doing the work of God and they are in and they're doing what's right, I want to get behind them and bless them. But at the same time, I am not going to drink from the well of Esek or the well of Sitma when I know that there is a Rehoboth, there is a place of spaciousness. And I believe that if we all as a church come together, get our shovels in our hand. And if you say that you don't have a job, see me after church. I, I'm, I'm dead serious about that. We have got so many ministries that are taken off right now. We need to get the prison. We need to get more and more with that. We need a nursing home ministry. We've got a food ministry and a clothing ministry, and I, I want it to be a lot bigger than what it is. We have got the biggest youth group anywhere around. Amen. You know why? You know why? Because for years, they dug and dug and dug. And the enemy was saying, you're not making any impact here. There was a few would come. When I first started coming to church, there was a few kids that was coming. But they wasn't a whole lot. But you're wasting your time. But you know what they done? Every Wednesday night, they opened up that Bible study. Whether they was two kids or 20 kids, they opened it up. And they took their shovel and they kept digging. And the longer they dug after a while, about five years ago, we struck water in this church. And now look at that. Now we have got 50 kids or more that is there every Wednesday night. Listen, last year we had our vacation Bible school. Over 100 kids come through here. You know why? Because there's some people that know how to get a shovel in their hand and they know how to dig. That's the same thing with the church. The, this church has got some shovels in its hand and it is working. And the more that we work, I'm going to tell you, the end enemy don't like it. The enemy's going to come against you. But count it all joy when you go through tribulation. Count it all joy when the devil is coming. And Paul said, I glory in tribulations. Why? Because I know that where we're digging right now, there is water and more water and deeper water. Oh, we've got some of it right now, but I'm waiting for the day when it becomes a geyser shooting out of that well. I can't wait for the day when the Holy Ghost comes down in this church and baptizes everybody here. I can't wait for the day that we st that Burl walks out of that church. I can't wait for that day. You know why? Because, man, we're digging in the right spot. We found the old path. We're digging in it. Yes, the enemies are going to come. Yes, they're going to be envy and contention and strife. And they're going to say that well belongs to us. I'm going to tell you, everything belongs to God. They said that water is us. And God said, no, that water don't belong to you. That water belongs to me. I own the, the, the hills and the cattle that's on them. I own everything. The earth is mine and the fullness thereof. And if he tells us to dig, and I believe that's what he's doing right now. I'm excited. Stand to your feet if you will. I'd go on all night. But we're going to start. We're digging. Yes. If you need God to move in your life, get your shovel out. Get up here on an altar. Quit sitting at that well of contention and hostility and go to Rehoboth. <coughs> start digging. Dig again the wells that Abraham had dug. Don't let the enemy fill them in. Don't let the enemy discourage you. Oh, I know how it is. People talk about you, fight you, say all kinds of things. Make false accusations and accuse you. I know how it is to get to get discouraged. But when Abra or when Isaac dug down and that was a well of living water, then he knew God's blessings was on him. I'm asking you right now, take your shovel. Come on, let's find us a place to pray tonight. Come on, get your shovel and start digging. That water was there all the time. Catch that? They filled it in with dirt, but the water was still there. The enemy's done a lot of things, but the water's still there. And all you've got to do is just keep digging. And if you'll keep digging, you'll get your breakthrough. If you're digging, you'll get everything, everything that your heart desires, as far as spiritually speaking, you can have it if you're willing to dig. So come on, let's dig tonight. Let's get on an altar. I think some of us need to get back on an altar. We forgot what it's like to dig in. We forgot what it's like. We knew what it was like when we was needing salvation, baptism of the Holy Ghost something. What about tonight? What about tonight? 
Do we still see the need to gather around? Do we still see the need to go to an altar and dig until you, until you break through? Come on, find a place to pray.
remember exactly how it felt the night I walked the aisle and there at the altar I knelt tears of repentance were rolling down my face I learned first hand about God's amazing grace every day I love him more I've got to testify how more than I ever had before I Oh 